Hi, hi, knitters. This week, I will be showing you how to make this washcloth, which is from the Almost Lost Washcloth Pattern by Julia Tasha, found free on Ravelry. I'll put a link to that below, but I'll also put instructions up on the screen as I go as I make this. The first thing I am going to use for this project are our Higher Higher Stainless Steel 4 inch DPNs. These ones are 3.5 mil. Okay. Whilst they're not as pointy as our sharps, they're very good for more delicate yarns. I've seen lots of different things online for small knit projects you can use these for. I just wanted to give them a go because I haven't used DPNs of this size. So I thought this would be a good project to practice with. Finally got my hands on a pair of higher higher rainbow unicorn scissors. They are just very glamorous embroidery scissors. We also do these in guitar, butterfly and an art deco style. Um, but these are clearly the favourites at the moment. And the yarns I will be using for this are these two. Sorry if I butcher the name, are Shep's Callista. I have two colours here. Not bad names, just numbers. So this is 281 and this one is 157. Even though we are still in the middle of a bit of a heat wave, roll on autumn, roll on all the Halloween-y things, you can expect some autumn-y full Halloween videos coming from me soon. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with the orange one. Even though they are DPNs, I'm just using two of them for this project. You could use small tips on our interchangeables, you could use flyers for this. However, I just wanted to play with our new 4 inch DPNs. So for this, just go grab two of our DPNs and find the end of my yarn. Nice. So you need to start by casting on 14 stitches. Now I am making these quite small. The suggested pattern says to use US size 8 needles, whereas these are just US 4s. But I just want to test making a little one, and if it works out I have a feeling that I will be making a lot of these in a larger size. Which if I do, I will share to our Instagram, which is at higher higher europe that's the same on most of our social media platforms so please go give us a like if you tag us in your photos using our products uh, please be sure to tag in your retailers so we can show them some love and support them but yeah tag us in your photos for a chance to be shared so it's knit for yarn over and then knit to the end but leaving the last two stitches. For this project you want a cotton yarn or something, you basically want to avoid acrylic. Um, so this is a, I believe it's a cotton bamboo blend. It's nice and soft. Right, so I've knitted to the end, I've left two stitches and then you want to turn your work and knit all the way back. And in doing this, you've increased your row by one, but you're gonna start creating that triangle point at this end. That'll be the center of your work that technically you're working around. So that's your first one. Ta -da. Row two is knit for, yarn over, and then knit all the way to the end until you have four stitches left on your left needle. So now I should have 16 on there. So row three, like the previous rows, is knit four, yarn over. And if you've guessed the pattern by now, or if you can read what I've probably put up on the bottom of the screen, is knit until you have six stitches left. And then turn your work and knit all the way back. So now I should have 17 stitches on my needle and maybe I should have gone for the five inch ones for this project because this is going to get tight on the next row. We'll see. Row four is knit four, yarn over 
and then knit until you have eight stitches left on your left hand needle. And once again, flipping your work and then knitting to the end. This is when it's really tight on the needle by the end, but it should just do it. Row five is to cast off your first four stitches. So we're back down to 14 stitches. Cast off your four, knit the entire row remaining, and then knit, go say knit to the end and knit back, and you should have 14 stitches on your needle. So you can see how doing the yarn overs helps create this that bend here. So it's at this stage I'm going to introduce this brown shade. I'm just going to cut my yarn here. We're going to repeat this exactly the same but in brown joining here and it's repeating these all the way around. Now something I should mention about this pattern, I am doing this in two tones, two yarns, but because it will have a total of 15 points on it, there's going to be two spaces next to each other that is the same colour. Uh, so you don't have to do this two tone. In the example she's given is some very nice yarn that naturally stripes by the looks of it. You could just use scraps, this could this is just an excellent pattern to use up any leftover bits of yarn to put them to good use. Whilst I can say these DPNs are really good and I'm enjoying working on them, for this project I maybe should have used the 5 inches because it does, you might have just seen then I dropped a stitch, picked it back up again, just fell off the end. But yeah, handy little things to work with. Uh, I learned how to knit on straight needles but I hated when they were too long, they just felt like they got in the way. So using DPNs for smaller projects is something I tend to go to, either the DPNs or our flyers at the moment, especially for small projects in the round. Hopefully you've seen the video before of when I made little face scrubbies, if not I'll put a link for you to the side for that one. But if you have any suggestions for other eco-minded projects, please let me know, chuck it in the comments. I would love to know what other patterns you think I could be doing. I'd love to know what are your favourite patterns, or even if you've designed one, um, send me the link to Ravelry. I will give it a go if I can, and pop it up on one of our future videos. bottom of the pattern there is an update um, saying that she has made mini versions of this. So I am going to attempt to make those miniature ones on these needles. Uh, it won't be in this video, uh, that will release probably next month so keep an eye out for that if you do like this one. So that should be the end of your knitting. What we're going to do now is cut off our yarn with a fairly hefty tail so that you can sew up here and then pull your yarn through this and pull it tight to close the circle. If you loosely cast on, I'm gathering you can pick up your stitches to knit these together. However, I'm following the pattern here, so I'm going to sew. Using my trusty higher higher down it darning needle. It doesn't mention at any point that you need to cast this off. I'll see how that goes. If you're doing it as a gift you might want to do it really fancily but as this is just going to go in the kitchen to be used as a dishcloth I am not too fussed as long as it's secure. So. Okay so I've done that. So you want to loosely weave your yarn around these stitches so that you can pull it like a drawstring to pull this hole shut. All that's left to do is bind this off, weave in your ends and then you have one handy little dishcloth. This was a very simple pattern, it wasn't that long to knit, 
in between doing other things this morning this took about two hours probably would be a little bit less if I was sat watching tv or something and just blitzing through it I will link the Ravelry pattern below for you to try it has 3,763 projects of it on the go at the moment so it is a very popular one and I can see why and that's it for this week's video please leave a comment below your suggestions for any future patterns I can try or what you think about this one be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for weekly updates in the world of higher higher Europe and until next time Happy knitting!